Uh, from the external camera on the uh, Soyuz TMA-15M as we stand by for undocking. We now have confirmation that the uh, hooks are driving open. This view of the uh, Soyuz just moments away from its departure from the Rosviet module. The uh, descent module in which the crew is strapped into their seats is on the left side of your screen. The bulbous portion uh, that is docked uh, is the orbital module, the uppermost or forward section of the Soyuz spacecraft. The mechanical capture not illuminated anymore. The timer is ready. Standing by for physical separation. Two minutes. Two minutes. No, you, you went fast. Here we go. Yes, you went fast. We pulled you. The mode is yeah. undocking confirmed. So, one. Two. Checking the VS ready indicate the mode is no longer ghetto is clear. Undocking confirmed at 5:20 a.m. Central Time as the International Space Station and the Soyuz TMA-15M passed over southern Mongolia. The docking uh, mechanism, no issues, no foreign objects, all nominal. Verts, Shkaplerov and Christopher Reddy bidding goodbye to their home for the past 199 days. It has been one minute. Check King Thrusters A1, D5, G7, A11, A13. All uh, eliminated the bases ready at page 97. Eight sec for eight seconds, the thrusters should be firing. Copy. Approaching uh, a point over northeastern China, a great view of the Soyuz TMA-15M having departed the International Space Station just two minutes ago. We're standing by uh, for the initiation of the first of two separation burns, brief uh, firings of the Soyuz thrusters to initiate a more rapid opening rate that will ultimately place the Soyuz 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station for its deorbit burn at 7.51 a.m. Central Time. Yes, on 57 seconds, copy. And uh, the first separation burn is underway. Illuminated. The burn is complete and good. 
We have a roll maneuver. A good view of the roll maneuver now underway that places uh, the Soyuz in the proper orientation for the second of the two separation burns that will be coming up just one minute from now. So we continue monitoring maneuver in Oysk. Anton Shkaplerov at the controls of the Soyuz. These burns are automated, uh, built into the onboard computer system for the Soyuz vehicle. Shkaplerov in the center seat of the descent module, flanked on his left by board engineer number one, Samantha Cristoforetti of the European Space Agency, and uh, NASA astronaut Terry Vertz, the offgoing uh, Expedition 43 commander, seated to Shkaplerov's right. 30 seconds duration for the thrusters. There it is. No, 410. 420. This view uh, from the uh, Soyuz spacecraft as well, as we uh, provide you uh, several views, uh, both from the Soyuz and from cameras on the International Space Station. The second of the two separation burns underway. This one uh, about 30 seconds in duration. Copy. There's the bell. And the second of the two separation burns complete. The Soyuz now begins uh, a more rapid opening rate uh, to place it uh, some 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn that is scheduled about an hour and a half from now. I'm watching on format 44. Make that two and a half hours from now. With uh, Verts, Shkaplerov, and Christopheretti now on their way to their deorbit burn position well away from the International Space Station, they will be uh, reporting on uh, Soyuz systems. They'll have a bit of free time as they prepare for their descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. Ultimately uh, reporting uh, a little over an hour from now on their descent readiness to Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center. Before loading into the onboard computers all of the parameters for the deorbit burn itself. That deorbit burn uh, Four minutes and 40 seconds in duration. That will be uh, the Soyuz main engine firing in a braking maneuver uh, to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second for its uh, entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. Is D8 ready? Yes, it's issue D8. Uh, D8 is not illuminated, D11, not D17, G17, S11, not illuminated, S18. Illuminated, uh, this is the headlight, turning it off. The headlight is off. Vizir Prichal D18 is off and not illuminated. Root is in transport position. As the uh, Soyuz uh, drifts further and further away from the International Space Station, uh, a combined uh, Russian, NASA, and European Space Agency team of uh, specialists are uh, preparing to leave uh, hotels uh, about an hour from now in the town of Jezkazgan in south-central Kazakhstan 
heading for the airport there to board a dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters, eight of which will uh, head to the prime landing zone, which is about 92 statute miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan, uh, where the Soyuz is expected to touch down at 8.43 and 43 seconds a.m. Central Time which will be 7.43 and 43 seconds p.m. in Kazakhstan at the landing site, just about one hour and 34 minutes before sunset. The other four of the dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters will head uh, to the southwest of Jezkazgan, uh, more in the area towards uh, the Baikonur Cosmodrome in a ballistic landing zone that uh, would be the target uh, for the Soyuz in the highly unlikely event that a problem would occur with the Soyuz uh, that would cause it uh, to land short of its intended nominal target. Pressure 171 and 172 is in the second spherical tank. and the. Uh, Eight primary helicopters uh, that will arrive at the landing site to greet uh, the uh, Soyuz crew will be accompanied by uh, four all-terrain vehicles that will help uh, in the recovery of the crew as well as uh, a, an Antonov uh, air, fixed-wing aircraft, uh, part of the ser uh, search and recovery forces that will be flying overhead uh, in the landing zone acting as a uh, relay station, if you will, uh, for uh, voice and telemetry from the Soyuz spacecraft back to the Russian flight control team in Korolyov. That Antonov uh, fixed-wing aircraft uh, will establish voice uh, communications and uh, GPS uh, location data from the Soyuz spacecraft, relaying it back to the flight control team in Korolyov so that they can uh, pinpoint uh, the exact landing site uh, for uh, expediting uh, the arrival of the helicopters and other recovery personnel to help extract the crew uh, from the Soyuz descent module. The uh, coordinates for landing, assuming an on-target landing, would be 47.19 degrees north latitude and 69.33 degrees east longitude if uh, the Soyuz lands on target as is expected expected later this morning. Okay, copy 143000. Copy, Moscow. Once uh, the three crew members are extracted from the Soyuz uh, spacecraft, uh, they will be placed in uh, comfortable chairs nearby their vehicle. Uh, for an opportunity uh, to acclimate themselves to a gravity environment for the first time in 199 days. Uh, they'll be carried in those chairs into a nearby inflatable medical tent uh, where they'll, uh, they'll doff their uh, Sokol launch and entry suits, get into more comfortable clothing, undergo initial medical tests, and then uh, board uh, three of those Russian helicopters to uh, fly uh, two hours back uh, to the staging city of Karaganda, Kazakhstan, uh, for a short welcoming ceremony. At that point, uh, the crew will split up with Anton Shkaplerov boarding a, a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to uh, Chkalovsky Airfield just outside of Star City, uh, his training base uh, on the outskirts of Moscow, while Verts and Cristoforetti will board a NASA aircraft in Karaganda for the uh, trip back to Houston. Right now at the landing site, uh, the weather uh, is said to be splendid, uh, with just a few clouds at 7,000 feet, some scattered clouds at 20,000 feet. The forecast calling for very light winds, about five knots out of the east-northeast, and temperatures in the mid-80s. Um, Moscow, Australia, when will be the end of compass? The Calm uh, should be in S band and uh, should be permanent. It's just in case. But the push it off button should be depressed. Yes, it should be depressed, Anton. That's right. Copy Moscow. Yes, it should be depressed. 